Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya. Weird news. Hot gossip. And scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, happy campers. Welcome back to Camp Shady Bird. It is week 61 here at camp and our second podcast of the day. Mm -hmm. We just did the BCC podcast. Are you familiar? It's with um, Kendall Landreth and Sarah Shower. Mm -hmm. They were in the city because they were performing at New York Comedy Festival. Uh And I'm friends with Kendall. So Kenny reached out to me. I've never called her that in my life before. (laughs) Kenny Gav. After spending the entire weekend with her, I'm calling her Kenny Cat now. Kenny was like, hey, queen, can you open for us or be our special guest? So initially, I thought I was going to be like opening for them. But then as the planning of the show happened, I ended up... Um, just being a part of the show. Yeah, the live show we're talking about. The, yeah, the, the comedy club. Yeah, so the live show. So I, guys, I did my first ever live performance. You did so good, and there were some campers there. There were some campers there. If you were there, I'm so sorry. I thought I, I'm gonna be honest because be I feel honest, like be honest. Everyone was telling me I did great. I thought I completely bombed it. Mm-mm. It is so hard to transition from like joking in your living room by yourself with a wig on to then doing it in a room full of a hundred people. It just felt a little intimidating, and and to know Kendall is to know that she's like an expert at improv, so it was very nerve wracking. But everyone did come up to me and was like, "Oh, you did a great job." But then also, campers, think to yourself, "Who's going to tell me I did a bad job?" Right? right? So it's like and I can't. Half of the people who are telling me I did a good job are on my payroll, right? Inadvertently, and that's, and that's valid, and I get that. That's why I'm like these people. I, these are my I, agents and my managers. Y'all take a percentage of everything I do. Of course, you're gonna tell me you did good. I'm not, I'm not gonna try to convince but you. But you're any my boyfriend. Further. You're also gonna tell me I have good. No right. one is being honest here. Okay, you absolutely blew it. It was a mess. It was awful. No, I'm just kidding. You did great. And it's also like your first live show and it's so different. Like we're sitting here doing the podcast. If we didn't like how we opened up the show, we could stop so and true. redo it. So but true. when you're on stage, you can't stop and redo it. Well, you can, but everybody's already already heard what you said. I think, so how the show was structured that I just did, it was like 30 minutes. We're like back and forth between like LA and New York being ourselves. And in the last 30 minutes, we did this character bit where we all played our moms. And I had more fun doing that. I actually did enjoy that. There was a couple parts where like, I wasn't sure where it was going because I have a hard time sometimes with like, yes, and doing like a real improv setting, which it was. But um, I thought that I was most comfortable there. So I, w- I would be open to doing more character work um, in in my costume. And I feel like you kind of surprised yourself because that was the part that you were the most worried about was improv in character. And the three of you flowed together very well. Well, thank you. So that's why we did the BCC podcast because they're here. Yeah. So then earlier today we did the BCC club podcast. I don't know when the episode's going to be out, but we did do that episode this morning, which was really fun. I thought it was fun. And I was like, not as being so warmed up for today's episode. I feel fun, flirty, might I add sexy. I'm currently eating a blue lolly. Oh, lolly. A dum-dum. Yeah. And I'm feeling like a fucking dum-dum right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's something kind of that. hot about feeling down. Like, what? Like, what? I don't know. Can I'm you feeling repeat into the it. question? Well, I'm feeling really performance based. Not me killing this segue right now. And today's episode starter came from a conversation we had a few weeks ago, Jonathan and I. And I was like, babe, why have we not gone into detail about Jonathan's performance past because we read Britney's book last week. As you know, she started out as a child actor on TV. And I don't think y'all are familiar enough with the lore of Jonathan's performance experience on television and his aspirations to be a child actor. It is so interesting. You tell (laughs) the best stories. And I just want you to take the segment and just really run with it. I'll ask questions to hopefully answer the listeners' thoughts. But you, I want you to take it away. Where did your love of acting begin? Where did this pursuit start, Jonathan? Honestly, don't know where my love of acting began. You guys, we talked a couple episodes ago about when I was doing theater and stuff. But there came a time, and I really just think it was I wasn't good enough. (laughs) 
on the stage. Like I wanted to do things so bad, but the theater had kind of its small click of of rotating uh, main characters. You have a question? Yeah, I was going to ask. It feels like sometimes theater groups that we're even saying. It's kind of like not nepotism, but it's like uh, it's like a popularity contest. It's like, oh, because you were in the last one, like, was it always yeah. a clean slate in the casting? I don't think it was. I don't think it was. Yeah, that's not fair. It, it's not fair, but you know what? Sometimes you had to audition to get into it, mm-hmm. but then like from there, it's like how were you put in the background? How you know how long have you been with the theater company? Things like Bullshit. that. I know, but honestly, like through my eyes, I was like, I nailed every audition I did. You're never fully dressed without a smile from Annie. You familiar with that song? I made my own t-shirt with Sharpies. And I was so stoked. I remember I like wouldn't let my parents see my audition. Not because I was like shy. I was like, I'm gonna wow you guys. And I want your faces in the crowd, like, to be my me delivering this for the first time and you guys being shocked in awe and so surprised and supported. That's I just want to feel that in front of a church full of people. Your mom still tells the story of seeing that for the first time and like sobbing no, it, so wasn't, it wasn't that one that was oh, it wasn't that, that one? was the fucking tarzan song what's the tarzan oh. song? <laughs> <laughs> keep going yeah and that was literally like dead ass how i would sing now it's like a joke but back then i would do that and be like why am i not being pat cast as like the lead role why am i not simba your mom when she tells that story of you singing tarzan she starts to re-well up like she experiences again and she will say she'll go on record barb will go on record and say that was the best performance she's ever seen live and it was you singing that tarzan tarzan song is it on video i think she says she has it somewhere I don't she, your mom is such know. like a recorder i feel my dad was my oh, dad, dad was absolutely the bookkeeper of the family that, what it was, well, the, yeah. yeah of course a lot of video footage of the inside of bags that was kind of like a funny joke um a lot of disney world feet uh, and all that jazz i need you to not mock that because coming from a family that there is probably three photos of me from ages zero to twelve that's all that exists of me. There's mm. like no catalog of any of my youth because my parents were like, we don't give a fuck. But your I'm parents. sorry, that makes me sad. No, it's, I just don't think, they. it wasn't a, an attack against me. I think they just didn't care about doing that in general. Yeah. It wasn't they were like, you don't get a photo specifically. Yeah. It was no one got photos. It just they, it wasn't a priority for them. We were living in the moment. But now we don't have the memories. Yeah. <laughs> but now you kind of experience it with my dad when we go on vacation with my family and my dad's like, get the photos and we're like, oh, we don't want to. But then I'm like, well, I'm so glad he took the photos. I coordinate. When we were at the family dinner, your You're mom right. wanted it and I literally called a host over and I was like, can you please take this photo? Because mm. it is good. People want a family memory. I do hate. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you Sorry, hate? we're getting off track. But I hate when like, the host or the waitress or the waiter or somebody on the staff like takes the picture sitting at the table and like the surrounding tables like somebody needs help with something and i'm like can you hold on we have to retake this because it's not in focus like i'm sorry you don't get your refill of your iced tea right now it comes with a job it's so funny when you work at a restaurant you don't ever think that your side job will be photographer vocalist as well because you're like yeah happy birthday to you eat that up tarzan hey oh wait, back, God, to, the, back okay. to the story back, so back to the story. story basically i was doing theater for um for a little while i wasn't that great always in the background never the lead but that's okay it didn't hold me down and i said you know what i'm better than this you watch so i'm at my friend kelly's house and i'm swimming in her pool as one does. And I hear on the radio, there is a casting call. Does your kid want to be on The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody? I said, oh, I had never heard this before. I said, what the actual, are you fucking kidding me? They're coming to town and they're going to take me away. And this is, I'm going to have my my star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I'm going to be living at the Tipton. So I hop up out of the pool. I grab a, a writing implement of some kind, probably a number two Ticonderoga pencil. And I jot down that phone number and I'm like, sorry, Kelly, got to go. Peace. Like not grabbing a towel. Soaking wet. Dripping. (laughs) Sprint four houses down to my parents' house. And I'm like, you are not going to believe Zach and Cody are coming to Illinois and they're looking for a new star. And I think I could be the triplet. So I tell my dad and, and my mom and I don't remember exactly how it went because I did. I ended up doing a couple of these, but this was the first one. And (laughs) yeah, there was more than one. So, guys, let's just focus on that for a minute. You did a couple of these. I did. 
did a couple of these. So super excited. Mm -hmm. um, figuring out. I'm telling everyone at school uh, as if it's I've already. I'm manifesting. I didn't even know I was manifesting. As you should. And I'm like, yeah, you guys. Oh, you so you didn't hear season two of Zach and Cody? It's filming soon. It got picked up for another season. I'm not supposed to say this, but I am gonna. I am gonna be on the silver screen. <laughs> <laughs> Literally telling people at school this. Why? I don't know. So I get there and it's at like a hotel. Um, what's the like the event space is like a grand ballroom of a hotel, right? The grand ballroom, of course, and it's pretty full with people. Compet com com like people mm -hmm. f figure it out, Zachariah. <laughs> Competitors. Yeah, like you would have been audience? called out right then and there. They would have been off the stage. You can't even read a line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, was there a lot of kids your age? Boys a lot of girls? kids. Lots of boys. Lots of girls. Um, pretty much kids my age, a little bit older, a little bit younger, like around that age. Nobody older than like middle school like there weren't high schoolers or anything mm -hmm. that i can remember and i'm sitting there and this woman's up front and she's sitting at a table with a guy with a camera and she's like telling us the rundown of everything we're gonna have to do and all of a sudden a woman in the front row her phone goes off and she takes it out of her purse to like turn it off and the woman at the table who's hosting this whole thing starts yelling at her and says you and your daughter need to get out of here and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, was it Abby Lee on stage? Who was that? honestly felt like that energy. And I was like, holy shit. And basically what they had us do was like they basically were talking about the programs. I wasn't paying attention. I was excited. I was like, give me my lines. Give me the camera. Let's freaking do it. But she was so scary that I remember telling my dad, I was like putting the word anxiety. I'd never like really felt what that felt like before or like been able to connect oh this is possibly like the verge of an anxiety attack but after that woman did that i was like i'm gonna have to go stand up in front of her and do an audition and be filmed and like that's scary to me so that was the first time i had an anxiety attack of course so i get my sides which is like the little snippet of of the script yeah and I had two. It was like a McDonald's one and a, a toothpaste. I don't remember what they had. As... I need you to give us, even if it's not word for word, uh, for the camper community, we'd love to hear a little sample of what this could look like. Need something to clean up that shit-eating grin? Try Aquafresh, <laughs> recommended by 8 out of 10 dentists. What happened to the other two? The police will never find him. <laughs> like something like that. Like, and it wasn't for that, that commercial. Shit eating grin. <laughs> wow. The, the guys, that was on network television. Did you did you recognize that voice? You may have heard it. <laughs> but they basically just like, I guess, wanted to see how we would read. Um, and then so I stand up there and they film it and I do my two things and then like they hand my dad like a flyer and they're t talking to him but we had to like kind of move off the stage so they could get everybody else to go and do whatever. And I don't know if I'm getting this mixed up with another one that I did uh, because I, this was Zach and Cody but Adrian Armante who played Esteban on The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody and again this could be a different one so I'm not trying to drag him through the mud but they were saying that he was having a class or there was a class something associated with him and that was the draw they paid him to show up so that you would show up and it worked and well the thing was they wanted me to take a, like a class either with him or associated with him or something and I don't think he's a bad person but they were basically like okay you had your audition here that's great but like if you want to go further and you want us to work with you you're going to have to pay like $6,000 for this acting class also you're going to need headshots because the current ones that you have aren't good enough you have to work with our photographer and basically shit like that to try to get us like into the agency but you guys it wasn't real it was a scam i you were a victim of a common scam that hbo has not gotten their grips on for a documentary yet because when they bust this open it's going to be insane because i know many of people that have done the exact same thing i tried to do this scam mm. Can I tell my little story? I, I'm waiting I'm waiting with baby's breath. I wanted to do the same thing you wanted to. It might have been the same circuit unit because I'm sure that traveling road show of a lie went around the country. Yeah, I think they were. Uh, yeah. Bouncing from town to town with unsuspecting children. Except the difference between your story and my story is that I had no parental support or supervision. So when I had to go on the, the internet, to sign up for this class. Mm. 
<laughs> they were like, you had to fill out this paperwork. And they asked me for my social security no, number. Oh, Zachary. <laughs> and I went upstairs and I figured, I asked my mom and she was like, I don't know what's happening. I had it's in like my like drawer. What do you, and then she's like, she would like tell me where it was. Then she would get really mad and be like, what do you need it for? And I'd be like, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. and then she'd forget because she was like always doing something and then i snuck up in her room and i found my little card and i went downstairs and i put that silk coat in and then i sent it off <laughs> you said redeem stardom i literally <laughs> like was putting my social security number on the internet for god knows what website https my ass i don't fucking know it was not secure i just put it out there and i and, and then who was gonna give me a ride to boston what was my long-term plan with this one? So what were well, they the, advertising? The Tipton was in Boston. Oh, hey. It was the it same was. it was the same exact thing you did. It yeah. was like go be it was and it was all it was never Nickelodeon. It felt like it was always like be on the Disney Channel. Because we all yeah. wanted to be on the Disney Channel. Correct. So I also but I like just filled out the paperwork and, and no one brought me. But I always thought it was crazy that I did that and was like eight years old willingly put, putting my social security number on the internet like that's out there yeah you're like i'm gonna meet miley cyrus here's my number it definitely though was zach and cody yeah it was probably the same it like, probably circuit. was you were probably like 10 oh god i don't i don't know whatever whenever season one came out however old i was because it was like fresh it was like new and it was very popular Do you remember the theme like, song oh my god here i am your life here, here you are in mine yes we have a sweet life most of the time you and me we got the world to see so come on now okay sorry um <laughs> esteban is a filthy little, filthy little no but but jerk. here's the thing no because i don't okay but this is where i don't know if i'm remembering that correctly no, because, because I'm i am remembering it i'm remembering it i know but i don't want to drag his name through the mud because he's still like prevalent and he still has a podcast and i feel like he's reputable and i'm not going to tear his name down because i feel like if he was associated with these scams that took five thousand dollars from your parents okay but here's the thing my parents didn't fall for it we somehow we auditioned for free but for the audition to progress that's how they get you is like you spent all that time the energy you yeah, sat through yeah, that yeah, yeah, you yeah. already did the audition it's on mm -hmm. tape but if you want the tape to move baby that is ridiculous and that whole that is like the perfect way that you described the headshot process they're like they're good just not good enough and you have to use other photographers right like what jack weed is that exactly and it's just and now i feel like it's really something that's more commonly known especially with like tiktok and stuff and everybody kind yeah, of yeah. getting information to people faster but back then i literally heard this ad on the radio like it was the 19 fucking 40s and i wrote it down using a fucking pencil those aren't around anymore babe one thing about you you're going to move your dreams ahead yeah you're going to get out of the pool you're going to put your pleasure aside and get to business i know i said sorry work hard play hard Play hard's over, baby. Time to work hard. And I dipped. But I do want to say, once that happened and the pay thing came in, both of my parents were like, oh, no, no, no. This, is, this isn't this is it. So, like, we didn't get scammed money-wise. We just had spent the time. Um, and then I did move on to, like, actually reputable places. I was just doing this rather frequently. I just, like, couldn't fucking sit still. Did you ever have, like, an agent? No. We looked into it. I don't think I was good enough. <laughs> <laughs> your family is just so supportive it's so they love you so much and now kind of hearing the stories about like childhood actors i feel like i'm they did me a favor of like not actually fully the, submerging me into it a hundred percent like statistically like i feel like 90 percent of childhood actors have gone through like just absolute hell and the other 10 percent are probably lying about not going through hell like it just it's not a good look yeah um and i i do feel like too at the time these things were easy to to fall for. Like my mom. Oh, do you know, of course. Do you know who Kim Delaney is? She sounds like a scam artist. No, she's not. She's an actress. She's an American actress. What was she in? She was in NYPD Blue. She was on All My Children. Those are like two she's shows in, that you say when you were when you weren't actually an actor. No, but she's she like, oh, that just like that's such like a big ensemble. Like I must have been in that. <laughs> she was on Tales from the Crypt with the dad from Smart House. She was on um, NCIS or CSI Miami. Basically, Side note: The dad from Smart House was actually hot yeah daddy we're going on record to say Papa. this is a this is a podcast that supports the father from smart house unless he's a terrible person then we don't support but looks wise we support looks he's a hottie um but my mom used to babysit her and she got found she literally lived across the street from where my grandparents lived yeah and mall of america she no, she got found at the Jersey Shore boardwalk that in, the, seems, in the 70s or the 80s. Back in the day, when they would scout for <clears throat> models and stuff like that, they would go to like pr 
prominent areas of like LA or like but the it laundromat. Se- it seems like the Jersey Shore would be a good scouting place for like looking for talent. So like to me, that story checks out. And I, no one was right. asking if I thought it was a real story, but well, it does it, check out. It did check out because she was actually on the shows. And she, oh my God, a couple of years ago, I texted my mom. I, I don't remember when this was, but it was a couple of years ago. What is Kim it? Delaney was on some award show. And I think she was, she was like really drunk. Like she had to be taken off the stage. And I was like, oh my goodness. And you were like, not my mother's friend. Yeah. Well, my mom babysat her. So and she then was you babysat a, a child that ended up on the roof. I did. That was another episode. That, did I tell that on the podcast? You definitely told that story on the podcast way long ago, but that's another story for another day. Yeah. I have a question about one of the roles that you have yet to mention. Yeah. You auditioned for quite a famous film under the name of a secret name that I think is very interesting because a lot of us have never auditioned for films. You're kind of our you're you're our window to the world that we crave knowledge on. So what was that like? Also, now you interviewing me in my IMDb page being dry as hell. Are we not? Honestly, <laughs> not, we're like having fun. I'm like literally interview me about like interview me about my child stardom that didn't exist. That's like I'm in a state of delusion right now at a fake camp and I'm not coming home. <laughs> like this is where I live. <laughs> this is the show. It's like this camp is fake. The career didn't happen. Like this is just funny. Yeah, I'm like, just. It's, I'm having I'm, fun. It's okay. To talk I'm about? kicking. I'm honestly. I'm. This is my tell all. I'm gonna be working on my memoir. You said if Brady's doing a tell all, I'm doing a tell all. Yeah. This is our. Wait. Yeah. You're the. You're my Nancy Grace. This is the clown in you. This is the clown <laughs> in me. Okay. So wait. What did you? Oh, the thing that I auditioned for. Yeah. I'm not trying to give it away, but I want you to. Oh, okay. So, I mean, there's not that much of a story to it. It's cool. It's cool. They'll think it's cool. I thought it was cool. It wasn't a lead role, but I did get a part and that I didn't end up being able to go to the filming of because we were moving. But for the uh, Dark Knight, Batman... That really sucks, babe, because that was a really big movie. And I don't want to hear another one that was another big movie. I know. Fred Claus. I have not been able to bring myself to watch that movie because I was supposed to be in it. I will never see it. I've never seen it. And I will stand firm with you that we will never watch Fred Claus. Because with it's, Rio. It's going right up on the shelf with Rio. It's too close to home campers. So I don't want to hear it. In yeah. the mess. If you're in the mess hall and we hear, oh, let's watch Fred Claus. You're going to get kicked out. You'll be kicked out of camp. This camp does not support Fred Claus. The Dark Knight, I've already seen it. And I already can say it's a great movie. It is. You, said it, the you pod, already said it. It hurt. Michelle Williams yeah. was married to Heath. Yeah. What were you going to play in that movie? The Joker's daughter, like a featured background extra. He would have been in the gurney, the that, gurney, and the, the hospital. When, when the Joker is dressed up as the nurse. Oh yeah! And if you haven't seen the movie, like grow up, like figure it out. Yeah, that scene transition when he turns around, he's like, Meh, and he's the nurse. You would have been in the gurney uh, yeah. behind him and said, "Help me, help, help me. me!" And then I would have been with Sigourney Weaver. I thought what was really crazy about Batman was the constant change of. Like the characters, why are they constantly making new versions of Batman? I don't know. They do it with Spider Man too. I think so uh, they do it really Spider- with all of them. I think it's just to keep like the lure alive. Spider Man's way more than anybody else. Though. They can't stop making new Spider Man's. I feel like since I was a kid, we've had like five, fifteen Spider Man's. I don't even watch them. I do love Toby Me McGuire. Oh, I heard he's not a nice person. Honestly, I don't know much about Tobey Maguire. I know he's a great actor, and that's all I care about. I think he's a tender lover. I don't know a lot. A lot of people I know aren't nice. Okay. Was he mean to me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah good, he was. No, good question. I don't know. It's a good question. What was the movie going to be called? Um, it was under a pen name. It Tell was people called... what that's like. What's that mean? That see people well, don't it know was, this. I, I don't really know why they were doing it. It was like the working title was Rory's First Kiss. That's and clearly I, to hide the production. Yeah, and I didn't know if that was true or not because I was like, was that a fever dream? Because sometimes I'd be having dreams and I'm like, was that real? That seems so specific for you to make up. Well, Rory's I did Google it. Kiss. I Googled it and that's, that is what it was called. That was the working title. I think it was to keep it on the down low or I don't know what yeah. that scoop was. But. I think too, like that's the whole part of the conversation is to peel the curtain back. And as someone who is not an actor, I didn't know that sometimes to hide the anonymity, am I using that word correctly, of a film they will put a different pen name. That was cool. Yeah, and I don't know if that's what the purpose of it was. Probably was, but nowadays they're just like... They're like, what? The, the, Whatever. The reverse is like, Zach and Cody on the radio. It's like absolutely crazy. So would you have rather been in the Dark Knight or Zach and Cody? Zach and Cody. Mm, okay. 
At the time, probably. But I did end up, like, doing smaller projects. Are you comfortable enough to share the films that you were in or not with the campers? Because there's one that you won't let me watch. What? There is a movie that Jonathan worked on that also he acted in. And he was in college. And we talked about it one night. We were, like, actually like, fucked up drunk. Um, and we were like, we should watch this movie. And we found it on Amazon. And we were about to click purchase. And then you got really nervous and didn't want to watch it. Because you're like, I've never seen it. And I told you I was going to watch it alone. And I don't want to out you. But there are movies out there with you in it. And, like, as, like, small characters. And I think it's Wait, that's, so cool. That's so funny because I've never seen that one. And I also, there's you know another one. About. Yeah, there was another one called X. Equity oh, so with guys, Anna he's, Gunn. I guys, was he's with, dropping the name. Start, start watching. Yeah, but I've never, I never saw Equity. What was the one that was the one that we saw you in the trailer? Oh, Crooked and Arrow. Crooked and Arrow. We haven't seen it yet, guys. If anyone's looking for some five dollar homework on Amazon Prime, Jonathan is. Oh wait, honestly, this is what you're gonna do. This is what you seriously can do. Stop. <laughs> no, stop. no, because they can go on Amazon and they can search Crooked and Arrow. Click the trailer. That's okay, free. Yeah. And there's one scene. I feel like you're a pallbearer for like a yeah, cast. Yeah, f- dies. No, oh, in real shit, life. Sorry. <gasps> Stop. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So in the trailer, he's carrying a, a casket or a coffin. And and, okay, yeah. And can, I was sorry about that. You can see him in it. And it's really cool because. Not like, in the casket. I'm not in the casket. No, you're carrying it. and the But the quality of it. I didn't see the movie. You worked on it. I'm just saying it looks really high budget. And let me just say this really quickly. Say it. So I did work on that like on the crew so i was like an assistant a second assistant a man of many talents and we filmed that at an actual funeral home and we were using a prop casket it was empty completely you know was it heavy it was very heavy I knew it. and there was a bunch of us who we had to get it through this really tight door basically but then after it was a real functioning um funeral home and the guy who was everybody was like moving to the next filming location and the guy who owned it was like can you please help me i have these people coming in later today and i have to get this casket and all the guys who are normally here to help me on the weekends the window was closed because you guys were filming and i'm like you're asking me to move a body with you so he literally had me go downstairs with this man and i had to move a body from and it was outside and it was on a slant it was like a really like you know basements that are outside and then on the front of the house like it's on a hill right yeah, so and then yeah. we had to bring it in the front way that's how i had to literally move a body and the whole time we're moving it up while it's in the casket i was so fearful that the casket was going to flop open and, and the body was just going to fold forward i think they have like locking mechanisms to keep them like and i get that he was so desensitized but he was asking me questions while we were doing this and i couldn't answer because i was like i'm literally like pushing like a, a dead body and this is like I'm clocked in like I'm working right now like I'm on a film set and I'm supposed to be doing film stuff and I'm they just never tell you what to prep for you that's why you got a producer credit because your job was just all over the place Certainly that is was. that is really crazy that's a crazy experience but I hope you carry that with you with some sort of like wow like life is nuts and I have a story to tell because I always feel that when sometimes I'm put in traumatic situations if I can at least look at it after and say, hmm. That was a story. That was a story. I can find value in it. So yeah. there's value in that story. Uh, someone out there listened to that part and said, that was the craziest thing I've heard so far. So um, that was a crazy beginning. I had fun with that one. <laughs> I did too. That was fun. Okay, let's start the show. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Welcome back to morning announcements campers. Get out of your sleeping bags. Wipe those crusties from your eyes. Come on, there's food in the mess hall. This is the part of the show where we share news articles with you that you might have missed that we want you to share amongst yourselves, your friends, your families, your coworkers. Just some hard-hitting facts that you didn't get to see yet. Maybe you did. Um, My article this week is by Linda Hall from USA Today. The title is, A Vampire with a Day Job. Inside the life of an Ohio woman who identifies as a vampire. Wait, that's a cute title. A Vampire with a Day Job. Do you want to hear the subtitle? Yeah. I came out of the coffin, as it were, and never felt so free in my life. Oh, well, happy coming out. Happy coming out as a vampire. So, yeah. I read this article and said, hold on a damn minute. I have to read this. So, this Halloween marks the two-year anniversary of an epiphany for Helen, or Helly, um, Schweizer. On that date in 2021, the Ohio woman was struck by her connection to vampirism. I'm sure vampirism is just the word for like 
Is it a fetish? It's not a f- no, no. It's not a. F- okay. It's a lifestyle. Okay. Oh, excuse yeah. me. Joggers. Jog- um. <laughs> okay, so she's hooked on vampirism. There's been no turning back for this 28 year old woman who identifies as a vampire who wears fangs and makeup palette of dark and red lipstick with a phoenix eye, um, punctuated by red, orange, and yellow in a beak and a tail that's not true she doesn't have a beak and a tail i think it's like you're talking about her makeup she does like a red orange yellow kind of like ring around her eye oh and it's it is kind of like the the, the phoenix colors okay she also wears a white shirt with the flowy sleeves and a black cape okay so tradition traditional yeah do you have did you ever see interview with a vampire um i did not but thank you for asking very much referencing that that's one with guard. Kirsten Dunst, right? Yeah, Brad Pitt. Yeah, and they kiss and like that was weird. Well, let's not bring up the problematic part of that. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just no, for no, shock no. value. Okay, got it. So that's her go-to look. She says. Okay. Her, Honestly, that's like easy when you get exhausted from like picking out outfits. She's got her go-to, and she probably has it in like multiples, so exactly. she can just pull from her. What do they have? Uh, casket closets or whatever. Yeah, I, I'm not sure of the inner workings of her home. But she might. Okay. She she goes on to tell us that vampires um, exist in every facet. So she's like, there's like construction vampires and janitor vampires and teacher vampires. Like a vampire can be anyone. And vampires and witches get along famously. Um, they run in similar circles. Not every vampire is bad. Um, attacking people or offering human sacrifices. She said that she follows a higher path. So a 2015 survey by the Atlanta Vampire Alliance. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Who are the Atlanta Vampire Alliance? How do I get involved? Because this is a community with a rich history and rich research, and I really want to be a part of it. Yeah, no, a rich blood supply. So 5,000 people in the United States identify currently as vampires. Oh, wow. There's not many. That's more than I thought. That's more than I thought. But like in the grand scheme of how many people are in the United States? Well, it's not. I don't I don't expect it to be common. It's kind of it is. I expect it to be even less than that. You know what I mean? There's probably I don't know. Oh, imagine like the one lonely like Idaho vampire who has like no neighbors that are vampires. Like, what do you do? Where's your crew? Well, is from Wooter, Ohio. She's not in a vampire rich area. Does she have, like, friends that are vampires? Through the internet, but not in real life. Oh, that's kind of sad. It is, but she's kind of in a community about that I'll talk about a little bit later. Okay. So um, she goes on to say that of the 5,000 people who are vampires, some of them do drink blood, Mm -mm. but from willing donors. Mm. So who are these donors? Okay. And also, how is that happening? Is it a transaction via, like cutting open the skin and then sucking directly or is it like let me put it in a little glass for you i would hope it would be the glass transfer of it all yeah i would hope so too it seems a little bit more sanitary yeah so she doesn't do that though okay she's what they call a psychic or energy vampire for the record she's not interested in sucking anybody's blood okay (laughs) she's just like kind of into like she's i watched her on tiktok she's like i walk into a room and if i feel good vibes i suck them in and it gives me energy. Oh, because in my head, I think I feel like energy vampires are like those friends who kind of do that, where you just kind of get exhausted around them. Is it depleting? Like if I'm in the same room with her, is she depleting me of energy or am I just like... She would say no, but I think we'd have to test it out. I think we'd have to test it out, which I am open to. So what? It, what's in the life of a vampire, you may ask? What's in the life of a vampire? So she doesn't subscribe to the notion that she'll live forever. That's an uh, and like a common concept with vampires. Um, she she doesn't suck in. Um, she sucks in energy, which she feels all around her. Um, I didn't write this down, but she also is like she's like for the record, I love garlic. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I love that. She's like, <laughs> she's yeah. She's like people in Ohio aren't scared of me. They're just kind of like what? And then she's like, yeah, it's me. Like she kind of have her own vibe. I think she's just like having fun with it. So she started off by like cosplaying vampires. And then one day she was in the cosplay and she's like, wait, this feels really normal. Like, yeah, this is me. Yeah. She just kind of like fell into it. Um, a big part of her career is on TikTok. Mm-hmm. So I think that's how this article was written about her. Right. She's about 10,000 followers. And she kind of just like talks about like her day to day. She's a social media manager, like independently. So she's like, I can kind of like do whatever I want. She's like, when I do meet a client for the first time, I try to tone it down a little bit, but okay, I which I think is like that. kind of funny. She's like hiding something. Can we say what the handle is? Um, I don't have it in front of me, but if you search like I did on um TikTok, 
um heli the vampire okay it'll come out yeah okay. and and you're gonna you're instantly gonna recognize those phoenix eyes mm. that she's so famous for painting um yeah i i think she just she says like she's like she, in her soul she's a vampire and she feels like she follows a lighter path you see how happy and bubbly I am. It's because of this. That's kind of sweet. I like that. Yeah, her husband supports her too. Oh, she's married. She did, yeah, she's even given him a little character in the bits, but he's not a vampire. Oh, okay. And her husband's um her husband's family's like, hey, she's doing her. She's doing so her. So everyone's letting Helly do her in Wooster, Ohio. Should. Yeah. So if you guys have ever considered being a vampire, there is a um there is a community based out of Atlanta. You can join them, but just join the internet. I love it. I I think it's very fun and um, let people do what they want to do. She ain't hurting nobody. She having fun with it. I was just going to say that. I mean, as long as I think the blood sucking thing is where I'm like a little iffy. And she don't do that. She doesn't do that. And she doesn't do that. So that's why I'm like, if if she wants to literally be a vampire and that's her thing and that's literally how she said, how she's so joyous and makes her happy, why would anybody be like that's fucking weird stop yeah like, like i'm addicted let, to reality let tv people like live yeah what does it matter like i'm watching sister Eyes every single week like talking on the internet about that every single week like what is that helping yeah nobody what is this helping her so and, and hey it's fucking interesting i find that very interesting i got questions it, i want answers to it is and it was very fun to read i was like this is so silly well i'm excited because i feel like i'm gonna go and like binge watch some um of their videos I also saw this is kind of this is separately, but this is what I was thinking of. Um, th- the thruple that I showed you, it's like a um, that is not even in the same. No, category this isn't in the same category. Creator. But I'm just saying this is the type. Like I got, I get so interested in people's like lives that are so different. But it's like a, two sisters who's dating one person. I'm not relating this at all to the. I feel like you, everybody gets that right. Like I'm not comparing this. I'm just saying this is something else <laughs> on TikTok. Now I'm backing myself into a corner. You're, we're just talking about people who are fringe members of society. Yes, thank you. People who live to the beat of their own drum. We always support and welcome those people at Kent Shady Birch within reason. People. Within yeah. reason. Um, but yeah, let us know who's fringe in your cabin. There's always one of you. <laughs> we can we talk about really quickly. The other week I went to the doctors because the doc was like, Hey, you haven't been to the doctors since you were like four and a half. And I was like, Pfft. You're like, I was too busy pursuing a film career. I was literally, yeah, and getting the flu every year. Um, (laughs) But I I went to the doctor. What happened? This this story is crazy, guys. And it was, I didn't even know what I was getting done. She was like, we're going to do a physical. I'm like, okay, fine. Like, whatever. Like, check me out. How's my heart palpitations? Yeah. What's going on down there? Every, everything's a okay. Good. Completely normal. Um, She said, I I have one of the prettiest heartbeats in the tri-state area. It sounds like a music box, like mm-hmm. a little ballerina dancing around. It does. And there's the ballerina is dancing around in, in my tummy. It's a murmur. <laughs> Not my heart murmur. Um, no, but everything's fine. And she was like, do you want your flu shot? And I was like, why well, friends giving coming up? And we got really sick last year. So sure. Like, why not? So she does bing bong, does whatever. And then she goes, do you want like us to take blood tests? And it kind of seems like we were both like, why the heck am I here? And that like, I don't know, made me feel like not. Like, I didn't love that because I'm like, I don't know. You tell me if you like think I should, I would be down for it. But well, it- they, they, that's how mine went too. They're very much like it's balls in your court. Like, they asked me if I wanted to get STD like testing, and I was like, I don't know. And they're like, well, it's really up to you. I'm like, well, just tell I, I need you to tell me what I need to do here. You know yeah. I mean? like, and I think, well, I think that's also fair because it's like the doctors shouldn't be telling you exactly like what you need no, to do. No, they do. They need to advocate for their patients. Okay. That's valid. But basically, I was like, yeah, give me the blood tests. Um, and I have talked about it before on this podcast that I do occasionally. <laughs> um, yeah, you're getting emotional. My body does shut down and I have been known to wake up in the back of an ambulance. This was one time and I had to get stitches because my body went from too extreme of a temperature and not. And I didn't mention this to her and I don't know why I didn't because after it she said, oh, that seems like uh, vasovagal. And I was like, oh, that's crazy because that's what it was. Like I already knew. So they were taking my blood and she's talking to me and it starts getting really hot and I I know the feeling. I start getting like my vision's tunneling the needles in my hand and I'm fine with blood. Like I've donated blood before, but, um, I was dehydrated and she let me know that. And then I just felt like a vampire was sucking the life out of me and I passed out 
I did. How long were you out for? Couldn't tell you. But then I called you and I was like. I was in a meeting with a photographer. I know. And they were keeping me captive. They like wouldn't. Because I was taking the subway. And I'm like, I'm not trying to pass out on the New York City subway. No. And I don't think you should do any more doctor's appointments alone. Because that's really scary. The same thing happened to your brother when he got his teeth cleaned. Yeah. Y'all love to pass out. It- <laughs> that's really scary. I'm sorry. I wish I, I really wish I was there. Yeah. But I'm glad you yeah, were but okay. we, I didn't know that. I didn't even sign up for that had I known before going. I just didn't think in the moment. I was like, yeah, let's just do whatever. But also, it was so hot in there when I got there the first you time. You said that in a text. So um, all that to say is if the vampire wants to take my blood, I'm sorry. It's probably just not going to go well. Yeah, he's going to pass out. He's going to hate your blood. He's like, why does this taste like nickels? Ni- yeah, I feel like all blood tastes like nickels. I know. I, I, why was the one word I was trying to think of? Uh, any other word but a coin and I said nickel <laughs> like I was like don't say penny say anything else any other word and I buy my nickel, goes, nickel. <laughs> why that. is blood metallic I'm not quick on my feet and that's okay well you're sitting down that's where I belong Okay. What's your story? Shall I get into it? My article's coming from sunny1063.com by Joe Winner that's the name of a winner if I've ever heard one do you know where that radio station is? where it is? it sounds like somewhere sunny Um, I think it's Portland I was going to guess Arizona. I, th- I believe it's Portland, and my reasoning will be justified in a moment. So the title of this is, The Army Corps of Engineers has a 2024 calendar of giant cats and infrastructure. Now, I, I know that there's a, pheno- a name for the phenomenon where you say something or like you relay information to someone like, oh, uh, I I saw a red car today and I loved it. And then you start to see red cars everywhere. I don't know what the name of that is. but I know where you're going with this. But I feel like that's what's happened with us with calendars because- Jack in the Box. Jack in the Box sent me a PR package with their sexy, like, Jack in the Box calendar. I know that sentence to you made absolutely no sense. That's what it was. <laughs> it was a calendar with the sexy Jack in the Box. I've never even been to a Jack in the Box. It don't yeah, exist around and here. And they just sent you a wall calendar in the and last- And a gift card. Was it the last episode or two episodes ago? It was the last episode we talked, or two episodes ago, but I had not- They asked me for that PR package, like, for my mailing address. My manager sent it to them. Like- a month and a half ago, like way before we even talked to the calendar. It was like yeah. two shows passing in the night. It's like so weird because like when was the last time I got a calendar ever? Never. And then you talk about it. Yeah. That happens. Now and now talking. this. That's just, um, I think it's fair to say it's probably just, I think there is a word for it and it's just coincidence. It's just calendar. But coincidence is is a word invented by people who don't believe in God's plan. I believe in magic and I believe in vampires. Okay, so all that to say, and I kind of want to read a little bit of this verbatim because I really enjoyed whoever wrote this. Go for it. After last year's success, they had to do it again. I paused. I said, last year's fucking success, bitch. I pulled up those 2023 calendars real quick. Okay. The Army Corps of Engineers just released their 2024 calendar of giant cats and infrastructure. Last year was crazy. The calendar was an internet sensation going beyond just being viral on the internet to being featured on television talk shows. If you somehow missed the fun of last year's post, here's a link. And I obviously clicked it. And they just photoshopped like pictures of cats and like baby kittens to make them look giant. Like they're like destroying things that they're building. I don't know what they were aiming at here, but it's really cute. And it's, hey, it's causing quite the buzz. So the Portland District U.S. Army Corps of Engineers decided to time the release of their calendar with National Cat Day. Actually, they teased the release on the holiday, then dropped the calendar the day after. This year's uh, calendar tends to have a gentler approach, like I just told you. Not them giving themes to the cats now. They're like, and next year it'll be business kitties. Like, why are we (laughs) doing here? It's it's the same as last year. They're just giant cats um, next to the, and like sleeping on like the infrastructure of like the buildings and like Hoover Dam and stuff and shit like that. Does it look good? Um, Some of them look better than others, but I'm looking at it. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, these people are having fun with it. I went on their social media to see like what these people were like and like they know how to have a good time. And the comments were very wholesome. People were like, I hate cats and I bought myself one of these cat calendars. And I'm like, this is cute. This is the side oh, of society and it's fun I to enjoy. See, like, science people like getting creative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And ha- having fun with it. And again, I think it's really just to possibly get the buzz going around what infrastructure a- about yeah. well, about the projects that they're working on i don't know if it's to somehow gather funding the buzz around the hoover dam who gives a fuck well the they're working 
on projects they're working on. I don't fucking like, know. Like, I need you to tell me what kind of projects because I don't like, know. You're I don't know what a, a fucking engineer does. Okay, like, I don't know. It's like, oh, look at this bridge. The kitty's on the water. Yeah, and it's like, well, do I pay the like? What am I giving my money to? Did you buy a calendar? Well, babe, I don't fucking have to because they're free. <gasps> Wait, so, why didn't you lead with that information? This year, this year they did the cats and bitch they did the dogs oh, so this is wow. what the end of it says um th- this is in the article both versions oh sorry also also new and this the year dogs. is the dog calendar <laughs> that's right they did two calendars the dog version has pups riding on ships looking after dams and running through locks a solid piece of work we all know the internet is obsessed with the giant cats that's why we're here both versions are completely free and downloadable and you can print and enjoy they are however full color and high resolution so my advice is to print them at work ink is expensive <laughs> <laughs> if you she want wrote that the article writer? yeah yeah oh, um that's funny if you want to give a shout out to the brilliant work here's a link to the facebook so i will be linking these things if you guys want to go get your free calendars i think it's fine i like that the writer was like she wrote in the article that's right it's like anytime it was a guy s- joe winner well that's a, that's a that's a, that's a gay man for sure <laughs> anytime you say something sensational and you say that's right it's almost it almost it almost it almost demands a second applause. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So yeah, there's not just a cat calendar, there's a dog calendar. That's, that's right. right. Honestly, I love that. We love you, Joe Winner. Like yeah. to Joe Winner at, yeah, at 1063. Go print it out at your um your job because it's expensive. Yeah, and apparently it is really high def because I saw one comment that this older woman who goes, Goodbye to my bandwidth. <laughs> And everybody's Who are like, these people? Shut the fuck up. You're getting a free calendar. Oh my God. Uh, but that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. The part of the show where we put on our shoes and we lace up and we tell something to take a hike. You want to go first? Yeah, we're in the wilderness and we're just pissed off about something. Yeah, that's really what we're doing here. We're bitching. We're telling something to take a fucking hike. Blowing off some steam. Grinding my gears. You know what pisses me off? What pisses you off? The fact that I'm not friends with our cool neighbors. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm going to talk about it. Talk about okay? it. Okay. Yeah. It becomes increasingly harder as you get older to become friends with people because there's just no commonality. And we work with each other. We have a very like isolating life in terms of the fact that we just like are kind of in our own routine. And I and I I'm very happy with what I'm doing. But when you do go to school or you work in a in, in a group setting, like that's how you make good friends. A lot of my best friends I've ever had were made either at school or at my job. That's where you make friends. So it's hard out here, you know? Difficult. And specifically, there is a stoop across from us on our street. And it feels like I'm watching the Friends reboot. They're all probably in their early 30s. And they have a gorgeous, like, collection of clothing. They all wear very nice clothes. And they smoke cigarettes. And they have beer. And they bring pizza. And they sit on the stoop. And it feels like they've been posed by Ralph Lauren. The way that they're all just, like, beautifully staggered on this stoop. And they're all in such great conversation. It almost looks cinematic to me. And I walk by. And I find reasons to trip or stumble or tie my shoe or happen to catch something up in the air, slow down by them every (laughs) single time. No one ever asks me, Hey, cool guy. You looking to be friends with us? That's what I'm looking. I, how do I ask them to be friends? You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. You're just like slowing down to see if they say something that's related, some that, that you can relate to that. You can literally be like, "Ah, I do that. Yeah. And And then join in the conversation. They're like, who the fuck? are you because if i was the on the opposite side of that i'd be like who the fuck are you you know what i do we have that neighbor who lives right down the street the one who let me take his parking spot and he is friends with them he's friends with everybody but here's the thing is when we took our walk the other day he did give us give me a a nod like two nods where he like didn't know if i saw him and so he did it again so i feel like he might be our ticket in no was he gonna gonna grab us by the wrist over come meet my friend he probably would he's a night school 
I heard you will yeah, hear a lot of things when you walk past the, past the stoop. I've never talked to this man, but we know things by just walking past the stoop. Also, I love that you said you were describing it like a Ralph Lauren campaign because in my head I was like, it, it's like Hey Arnold, like the opening scene of Hey Arnold, like the brownstones, like that's kind of what our street emulates to me. Yeah, well, they're all like, you know, they just like look so fun. And I, what did where did they meet? You know, and how are they also they're together enough where they have to be kind of close by, you know, they, they've they seemed like locals. They could live in the same building. Yeah, why Why are we meeting on the steps? Why when the same the couch? building got on different views because it's the stoop, baby. The, the, the sun's out. I'm going to sit outside. You're going to sit inside my apartment, my garden floor apartment with no windows. Get out of town. I want to sit on the stoop. I want to breathe in the fresh air. Listen to music. This isn't making me feel better. Okay. So next time we're over, we're going to introduce ourselves. That is the most embarrassing thing I've ever heard. Them in mid-conversation about whatever is passionately inspiring them. And I go, excuse me, everyone. Excuse me, everyone. Hello, I'm Zachariah. You want to be friends? Like, no, that's not how things work. There's no solution here. I don't want anyone in the comments being like, Zach, just talk to them. That's not how life works. And you wouldn't do it either. I'm going to be upset about it. This is the segment where I'm allowed to bitch about the fact that I'm not friends with them and I want to be friends with them. So, you know what? Maybe they suck. Yeah. Maybe they just suck. Change, change your trajectory. Think about something think about it through a different kaleidoscope what the fuck did i just say <laughs> just change your views on the situation you're just having fun with your words today i am they're just falling out like my brain can't catch up with my mouth well what is your take a hike uh mine's short and sweet but it's the the bread plates at a restaurant this is what can you explain this to everybody when you go to a restaurant and they have those little bread plates they're for the bread them. yeah but what if they don't have bread we went to that restaurant didn't serve us bread i had the little bread plate i'm literally our menus are so big i'm sliding it around as like as if i'm a casino worker and they move the dice around with that <laughs> stick i'm shuffling it over here i'm like oh that's in your way sorry shuffle it over there oh a girl sits down I'm like i'm so sorry let me move my fucking bread plate i'm not going to use and then what do we end up doing stacking them on top of each other like a fucking bunk bed then what do i do oh the guy comes over to take our mm. order i go to hand it to him at the same time he's taking it our knuckles touch that's not sanitary that did and you have very embarrassing heart? no i didn't i was i was like this just take it just i wanted to like break the plate i'm like i'm over this just fucking take the bread plate uh, we didn't get bread i'm not mad that we didn't get bread but like why offer a tiny performative plate if you're not gonna if I'm not putting anything on it. And most of the time we don't put anything on it. And we end up stacking them and shoving them to the corner of the of of the of the table. You don't use the plate because you are a hater of appetizers. You never suggest an appetizer. I am a glutton and I have to hide my love of appetizers. And those are put there for the appetizer. Let me stop you right there. We just dirtied two plates. They cannot be reused. They have to. We have to run it through the water cycle, which is killing this planet. Okay, fuck the paper straws. Let's talk about this. If we order an appetizer, bring out the plates with the appetizer. Period. Agreed. And I don't know why give us give us plates without bread. Like, why? I agree. Yeah. If there is, no, yeah, we're <laughs> not us thinking we're killing this podcast, and we go to listen back to it, and we're like, did we? say anything no, that this makes podcast sense. isn't a lot it's not about anything but that's what the world needs yeah. a little less of anything and you know what the world also needs a little less of fucking bread plates do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk over either way i'm giving them my boondoggle keychain over welcome back to camper crush of the week Boy, have I been sitting on this one like a pile of firecrackers. Everybody. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? I'm excited. My <laughs> ass is on fire right now because I'm so excited to get this out of me. Might be the Chipotle we had like an hour ago. What is going on with how much rice they're giving me lately? It's like, fuck out of here with that. Yeah, we need more toppings and less fillings. Why like, are please? we starting our Camper Crush of the Week segment complaining? We We're still always do that. Right. We jumped in too early. Sometimes we need like a cigarette break in between. We just need to like really. Yeah. Really replenish okay here we are we're resetting in three wait two we remember we said last week sorry guys this is a mess remember we said last week we were gonna do which one was worse oh oh and we literally bled into the next segment too yeah let's okay do it again. let's That's pick like okay fine so stoop or the bread plate i would rather have a bread plate at my restaurant and 
and be friends. Okay, I agree. I would I would love to be I'll sacrifice having the bread plate because it's literally like the cross that I bear. Like it's just gonna happen for the rest of our lives. And that's how cool our neighbors are, you guys. Mm-hmm. To set the, sto- set, the, set, the, set the scene. And I would love to be friends with our neighbors. So maybe we'll make that work. Okay. So now that we've bled now that we're bleeding all over the ground, let the vampire come in to sop up this mess. Go ahead. Lucky for me. My camper crush of the week is also an energy vampire. It is none other than Pink. Oh, P exclamation mark NK? Yes, the performer Pink. Yesterday, we saw Pink in concert. You might have seen on my Instagram story. Did you post on your Instagram story? Um, so absolutely crazy. I didn't realize until we were about to start this because I was like, let me see how that story did. I posted one picture. It's me with a horrifying filter. And I said, seeing Pink in 40, it has the most views I've ever gotten on a story. I and I had no follow up. There was nothing after. Because when you post like one, it does it like more people see it. It's weird. Tens of thousands of people. And I posted nothing after that. You love that scary filter. That should be your care for crush the week. Okay. But it's isn't about me or my scary filter guys i went to the pink concert because i was doing a deal with vivid seats there they sell tickets like Ticketmaster does or whatever so they're like oh like they're like oh pick a concert and then like just talk about like your ticket buying experience and like talk about using the app or whatever that's how that's how ads work and people aren't shocked by that so i looked at the con- concert schedule and i was like well who's coming that i'd want to see and pink was there and i was never really interested in hearing pink sing I was more interested in seeing Pink fly because I'm sure a lot of you know Pink loves to get in a harness and she loves to flip around that stadium and just sing her little heart out. So I got a shirt made for this video that I'm posting with Vivid Seats and for the concert that says I came to see her flip and flip she did. Guys, Pink is an incredible <laughs> performer. I've changed my whole tune on Pink yeah. after last night. Mm-hmm. She, her vocal range is incredible. She sings like nobody else. And it's so powerful. Like, it's such a positive light too. So grateful to be there and so thankful that everybody showed up. Packed house, second night in a row, Madison Square Garden. Yeah, Madison Square Garden, MSG. So two nights in a row, and she just is like so humble and so grateful people are there to see her. And she put on a kick-ass show. It was amazing. You'd be surprised how many Pink songs you know, guys. Yeah, and I can't believe how great her vocals sounded while she's Incredible. fucking somersaulting through the stratosphere. Um, but yeah, well, before we went, we were like, what Pink songs do we know? We went through the discography and we were like, why do we know every song, every word to every song? I was like, you know what? I have been a Pink fan because I'll hear her and I'll be like, yeah, I like this song. Or, okay, this isn't my favorite Pink song, but I would never be like, I'm a Pink fan. But I'm like, wait, bitch, I'm a, I'm a Pink fan. She has a lot of radio singles. Like she's like, radio has, radio has been good to Pink. Radio has been good to Pink. Ra- and so has time. She's really, and I feel like she's kind of stayed in her own lane and just like continued to do her own thing she's not a lesbian and she's not gay but she's so gay yeah it's it's pretty incredible how she does that because there's a lot and we were talking about this on the bcc podcast so many people who are not gay but are gay by proxy and pink mm-hmm. is one of those women um melissa the, mccarthy he, melissa mccarthy oh and i and i say that with love because i am gay i don't know if you guys knew that the entire audience was gay for the most part a lot of older people, a lot of gay people, and we were all there in hopes to see her her flip, and she did. I did wear a little black pussycat wig. <laughs> Is that what that's called? No, it's because it's a little spiky. It's okay. giving a uh, biker biker princess. It was for the bit, for the video, for right. sure, but it also felt very pink. Mm-hmm. It did. I, I saw a little women with that same hairstyle there. I was gonna say, you were literally walking past, like next to women who had that same exact hairstyle. I was like, this is Uncanny Valley. And I'm poking fun, but I'm actually a huge fan of it. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. when I make these character, like, like things about, about like, these women, it's like, it's because I, like, love these women. It's, it's really yeah. done in, like, in, like, actual admiration of it. It was just so fun. Pink is so cool. I think yeah. she's, like, actually really cool. It is crazy to think about how she's done so many shows and, like, for that show to feel so special like do you know what i mean like she made us feel so special like she was soaking it in she interacted with the audience like to perfection like not too much not too little she was sharing candy with people it was great but it really felt like we were seeing like 
the the show she wanted to perform. Yeah, and I'm like, are you this gracious to your entire like crew as well? Because the entire time she's like highlighting her backup singers and her musicians and thanking her crew. I'm like, are you doing this every single night? Because like it's like, it feels like a pissing contest of like who was nicer and who was like I love you more. It felt like it did feel like a very special one. I'm like, is she really just giving that every single night? Like I feel like I think she, she does. is, and she really let her backup singers have some time. Oh my god, yeah, they did. They had a lot of like solos yeah. when she was doing her. Her, um, her wardrobe changes. I know that like you have to have something entertaining, but a lot of the times, like they'll just play something on the screen or they'll like play instrumentals. But she was like letting her dancers have like a full solo to show off their artistic skills, and then all three of her. I don't even want to call them backup vocalists. Her co-vocalists on the stage let them do like almost an entire song and they were like ripping it up i was like this is fantastic it was and it ended on the most insane moment it, the moment we were all waiting for this pink was flipping through the air on a harness singing what was she singing um i want to say so what but it was yeah, that it was so what? So I'm what? still a rock star. Rock star. Rock and she's literally doing donuts in the air, you guys. Uh, up to the nosebleeds. Yeah. It like, was nuts. That's crazy that she's that comfortable in a harness. And I do feel like, I mean, that's been her shtick, right? And I feel like we see it all the time online. And everybody's like, pink's got to stop. Because I feel like for myself, I, I can only speak for myself. It's crazy how long you've been using, you've been sucking on that lolly right there. Well, it's giving me confidence. Okay. Um, but how I thought her whole show was going to be her like Flipping through the air, and I'm like, I'm gonna be so over this, but it wasn't. She did like one ribboning dance that she's been doing that little number for like 10 years, but then the rest of it was like she was doing the choreography on feet on stage on the piano, and then she flew through the air. And until you've seen Pink fly through the air, you can't really have an opinion on it because once you've seen it, it does feel like something in my life has switched, and I believe it's for the better. I feel different now. It's like Tinkerbell coming from the the magic castle during the fireworks show big fan of pink in this house guys yeah. jonathan what is your camper crush of the week um you guys know i'm behind on the times so my camp crush of the week is a brand new show <laughs> <laughs> i forgot now. what is it my camp crush of the week is gilmore girls Guys, I have never seen Gilmore Girls and we're on season one and I dead ass do not know anything about it. I didn't know they were mother Don't and tell daughter. Him any of the spoilers. You spoiled something already for me. And what so did, did I spoil? And so did Kira when she was on the phone the, and the, she was like First of all, it came out in 2001. It came out in 2000. Oh, even better. Pre 9/11. Um oh. so yeah. I've been really enjoying it. I think we're on we're still in season one. We're in the single digits still. So I'm like, I, I don't know where the show is gonna go. Uh I tried not to read too much online when I was looking up some things because I have some fun facts. Uh one or two things did get a little spoiled for me, but I'm like, I I could have saw that coming. What are you loving about it? Um, I'm loving through the dynamic with um the grandma, grandmama. The generational the generation of women. Yes. And I think it's inspiring. It's it is, especially like seeing the how how different they are, like you, mother to daughter to daughter to mother. You were asleep the other night and I watched a couple without you, and we're gonna go back and watch them. And it is so juicy. The writing is so... Who's writing it? Amy Sherman Palladino. What else has she done? She's the creator. I don't know. I just don't know. We'll Google it. Why are you so defeated when I ask that question? Because <laughs> like, I shut down. Because it's something I should know that I didn't look up. And I, every week I go, I should look this up, but no. I didn't. So it's more of a disappointment in myself. Don't be. You do okay. way more research than anybody else. But does. I did look up a couple of things. And I'm going to share them with you. Gilmore Girls style. And also, if you didn't watch Gilmore Girls... It, just shut the fuck up and watch it, okay? Can you do that? Out. Can you do what you've been doing in bed every single night? What? The deep voice when you say one actress's name from the show. Oh, and I don't know why I do it. It's like it just happens and then I have to catch myself doing it. So when I have the zoomies in bed at night and everyone thinks I'm the creep, <laughs> this is what we, we're in the pitch black bedroom, okay? We're trying to fall asleep. I have my sound machine on brown noise for my Rain Rain app. And this is what I hear coming from the corner of the room. Take it away, Jonathan. Alexis played out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know why I do it. That was coming. really good. You did a good job. That was actually scarier than it usually is. <laughs> I know. It'll be like pitch black. And I, sometimes I don't even know if you're awake. And it's just like, I'm like, I have to say it. I have to say it. I have to say it. And my brain's like, no, go to bed. And I'm like, like, I can't go to bed till I say it. And then I go, Alexis played out. And then I'm like, I'm all sad. It's like Bloody Mary in the mirror. Exactly. But it's you saying Alexis played out. Okay. So Alexis played out and Lauren Graham, who play Rory and Lorelai, mother and daughter, they never did a chemistry read. 
That's crazy. Did you know that? No, and the, I'm assuming since you are a resident actor here at Camp Shady Birch, yeah, that's a common thing for actors to do. Yeah, right? they would do a chemistry read, a table read, like something to be like, are these two main characters that we're starting a show with, are they going to work well together? Like, that's crazy. They met um, the night before they shot the pilot at a hotel. So when you're watching the pilot, they met yesterday. Isn't that wild? That... That is wild, but they're just talented women. Yeah. Well, there was some drama later, but um, Don't do Amy this. Sherman Palladino, who is the creator of the show and she wrote it, she had to fight for Melissa McCarthy to be on the cast. She, who ended up playing Suki. Su- Suki and probably like the most, well, I don't want to say the most, but like probably the most successful or continued, you know. She is the, the absolute biggest most successful, biggest name from that show. Um, they originally were casting um, Alex Borstein, who's, who plays Unger Meyer and Lizzie McGuire. She was on Mad TV. She's done a lot of accolades. She's Lois on um, Family Guy. She's the she, harpist. She's the harpist. She's so they wrote the part of the harpist to have her on the show because she couldn't do the character of Suki because she um, was picked up on Mad TV. Oh, so she was going to do it. So they recast her basically as, wow, good for Melissa McCarthy. Mm-hmm. And at the time, um, Alex was really successful so that's why they kept her in the show and she was funny on the show i enjoy i don't know her longevity i don't remember it so i i couldn't tell you she's just i only know her as the harp player from episode like two yeah um so another fun fact chris pine his first ever audition was for the role of dean yeah the guy who plays dean is more famous at that point, but he would have been good at Dean. But I Jared, think, I don't think he was famous then. That made him famous? Yeah. Okay. I'm well, pretty sure. Cool. Um, Rory's best friend, you're gonna love this, Lane, who's played by uh Kiko Ajina, mm-hmm. was 27 in season one. Wow. Playing a 15 year old. Wow. Yeah. I can't believe that. Wow. That's wild. Yeah. That she still wild. looks great. I looked her up and I was like, oh my God. So she's like in her 50s now. She looks exquisite this is a fun fact uh usually one script page equals one minute of screen time Mm -hmm. bouncing back to how fast and funny they are they spoke so fast that the show in the show that one page accounted for 28 seconds of screen time that's crazy well it's that's why gilmore girls it's fun to watch but you have to stop at certain moments because it's like okay it's a little much it's like a little too quippy like if you're drunk you don't want to watch gilmore girls it's like all right well i mean i guess it is a lot to keep up with but i like to be a little wine drunk and it is i see how it's people's comfort show i feel like it's nostalgic for me and i didn't watch it before especially this time of year too it feels very fall it's not like a it's not the heat of summer putting on gilmore girls oh but i will okay but i will i love stars hollow Guys. We'll tell them next week. Okay. We'll tell them next week. If you're on Patreon, you already found out. Yeah. Um, moving <laughs> on. Um, okay. And that's pretty much all the fun facts I had. Another, oh, we already said, oh, so Batman, Rory's first kiss. <gasps> I'm sitting there watching season one, episode, I think six. And it's Rory's first kiss in the show. And I said, my God, it, do you think anything has, is there any correlation? It's full circle because we were going to do this episode already and we knew we were going to talk about that and then it happened. And it, Yeah, it's crazy. A lot of coincidences lately. Coincidai, if you will. Yeah, multiple, multiple, multiple. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. So uh, we're back at Camp Songs. This is the list of music that we love. That was actually so good. Welcome back to Camp Songs, everybody. This is the part of the show where we share music with you that it's been stuck in our head all freaking week that we want you to listen to. So if you haven't followed the playlist, it's linked in the episode description. It's free on Spotify and YouTube. Just click that little episode description. I also didn't know how many people were keeping up like the second our episode comes out, people were like, oh, you didn't put up the songs of the week on. I was like, I'm usually a day ahead. So if you want a little sneak peek, you can pay attention to day ahead. But I was like, damn, like somebody was on it Wednesday morning. Yeah, they said. I, didn't. I was like, sorry, guys, I will. I got it. I'm coming. We sold that song. Yeah. OK. So anyway, what is your camp song? We're sticking in the pink category. Mm, the it's, category is? Category is pink, darling. Um, I'm going to do a little interesting choice pink okay. huge catalog of music but when i looked it up i said this is one that really tickles my tits it's the classic lady marmalade 
Mm. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? Uh, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, of course everybody knows what you're talking about. So Moulin Rouge was a movie that came out, I believe, in the year 2001. Sure. It was created, it was written, the music was written by Boz Lorman. Lawman. Mm -hmm. So think of that music video, then think of Elvis the movie. Mm -hmm. He has a very specific style. He certainly does. It's like very over the top. Yeah. So when they were casting the music for the movie, a lot of huge names are on it, but they knew they were going to create this like ultra girl group. And at the time, this was a collection of some of the biggest names in music. So Pink obviously was in there, if you didn't know. Christina Aguilera, Lil' Kim, Maya, and then uh, Missy Elliott. Missy Elliott has a really small part in it, but she is... I don't ever think of her in it, but I'm like, she is in it. Was she in the song or just the music video? Um, Ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. So Maya, we don't know much about. Lil' Kim, though... I am a little Kim Stan. I'm going to read you a little um, piece of this article about the tension between Christina Aguilera and Pink on the set. Of course there's got to be some drama on set. So this is coming straight from the horse's mouth. Who's? Lil' Kim. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lil' Kim said, oh yeah, I'll tell you what happened. So she said, behind the scenes, there was a rumored icy relationship between Aguilera and Pink. We, were, we worked really hard that day, Lil' Kim told Billboard in 2019. I remember there was a little tension because Maya's my girl, but a lot of the other girls didn't know each other. I knew almost everybody, but it was like everyone was in their own little corner. It was hard because I had to be the one to host. Um, it was hard because I had to be the host of Lady Marmalade. The beef, which reportedly stemmed from an argument over who would sing the song's climax, was later squashed in 2017 after Pink tweeted that she and Aguilera had made amends. So if you remember correctly, Aguilera, Christina, she got the climax in it. She ate that up. So she did. I'm not mad about I, it. I think Pink could have done it, but like, let's. Our, Christina really did eat it up. I remember watching the Pink behind the music on VH1 when I was growing up, specifically talking about this music video, and she said that she initially didn't want to do the music video or the song or whatever because the outfits were too scandalous. And she was like, I'm not wearing that. It's like, she was like basically calling it trashy. And they had to convince her that this was going to be big for her and that she needed to do it. So she showed up to set that day and was like, fine, I'll do it. And they gave her like more of a conservative outfit. But when she saw how like everyone else looked so fucking good in their like hot outfits and she was probably looking like a nun, she was like, wait, 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 fix this now. And then she ended up wearing like, a sexy outfit like everybody else did. But she made like a big stink about it. And then it was like, never mind. Oh, yeah. Not me like shit talking pink on like my song. Oh, no, so you're weird. just giving, you're giving behind the music. So Lady Marmalade was a huge success. It sat atop the Billboard Hot 100 for five consecutive weeks. And was that year's top seller with over 5 million copies moved worldwide. It was the first number one hit for Maya, Pink, and Lil' Kim. Christina's like, I don't need it. <laughs> with lit, with Ladder holding the title of the longest reigning chart topper for a female rapper until Queen Iggy Iggy in 2014 with Fancy. Really? Fancy dethroned Lil' Kim's record. Oh. I'm so fancy. You were fancy. No. How you do that? Do that. Do, do that. 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 Okay, so that's enough about that, but I think it's a fun pink song. There's so many songs, and now I think that it doesn't have anything to do with her at all. But whatever, you learn as you speak in a mic. That yeah, but oh, change. Oh, of course that's about her. She was in the song, the you song, gave us the drum. The song is so good. Like, it has been out for 23 years now, and you put it on now, and the crowd goes jumping. Everybody get jumping. Everybody better be jumping. I go crazy when I hear those crazy girls. Who was your favorite in the song? Mine was Christina, obviously. And mine was, at the time, absolutely, it was Christina. Full on, bitch, from the Moulin Rouge. She was great. She ate it up. She ate it up. Pink did a good job too. Yeah, of course. In retrospect, I would have to. I would love to give it a watch with fresh eyes. Yeah, let's see if we can see the tension with our own eyes. Oh my god, wouldn't that be drums? Who's your song of the week? Please let me fucking go. I want to go. I'm so excited to tell you that my camp song <laughs> is again present. Brought to you by Pink. <laughs> you in your hand, which is uh, absolutely spelled the letter U plus U R. Hand. So guess who fucking wrote this with Pink? Take a guess. I'll tell you. Max Martin. Ma guys, Max Martin is the name on everybody's list. Somebody needs to get this guy a job. He was the original guy who writes for um, all of Taylor Swift. I don't believe you. Bleachers. Prove it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What's his name? Um, Jack Antonoff. Yeah. He. I didn't know he was in fun. 
Yeah. And guess who performed with fun? <gasps> pink. pink. It all wraps up together oh in a bow. Oh my God. It all comes. It's like five degrees of pink instead of Kevin, uh, Kevin Hart. Anyway. So Pink shot the... Do you remember the music video? No, I'd have to think about it. It was very green screeny, but she had like a lot of like looks. It was like fun. She said uh, one of the fun facts, which I was like, this isn't a fun fact. This is just a known fact. But it took about four hours for each of the looks. They would film for less than an hour and she would have to change. I'm like, I'm not surprised by that. Actually, nothing nothing about that sentence was fun. Nothing was fun. In fact, I might edit it out. (laughs) Anyway, so Pink shot the music video for You and Your Hand. And the other song that I cannot stop fucking singing. Why can't I just add all these songs to the playlist? Stupid girls. Maybe if I act like that. Push up my bra like that. When I paparazzi. That. I don't want to be a stupid girl. So we were, like, we were talking about how that song is like very not feminist. But like but what is time. What is it for two men to, to declare what feminism is? Honestly. I'm going to shut my fucking mouth because what should I be speaking on this topic? Honestly, continue. <laughs> so she had those two songs and she's... <laughs> Someone finished their lolly. I know. Maybe I need a life of her episode. Maybe. Um, so she shot these two music videos back to back. Um, like literally like consecutive. Like they blocked out the days with the same crew to she's do this. Horse. Because they didn't know what their release was going to be uh, as the single, the first single for I'm Not Dead, which was the album both of these were on. Uh, which I think it ended up being Stupid Girls. Again, I didn't freaking I remember out. that video very well. Me too. The visuals in that were really... They were... It was, it was crazy because it was like <clears throat> all the celebrity cameos by actors. Was it? I remember Pink playing... Paris Hilton. Yeah, like there's multiple like people she's making fun of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like she made fun of Lindsay Lohan. I think she yeah. makes fun of the Olsen twins. Mm-hmm. So I was like, that's kind of shady. Yeah, it is shady. But especially like at the time, like everybody was doing it. Um, <laughs> so that's so, like, okay then. Yeah, like it's fine. It's fine. Um, anyway, the song caused controversy. Again, not stupid girls. We're talking about you and your hand. Song caused controversy in the U.S. because of its racy. Uh, references to masturbation and subsequently a lot of radios were just not going to play it so pink and her publicist further stated that she was prohibited from singing you in your hand on the u.s television show which you may have heard of american idol yeah that would have been so inappropriate for american idol and i do agree with that it's like was it yeah. kelly clarkson's winning and she's like in your hand, like yeah, kelly. It, it does seem like a crazy song to it, do for like a family-friendly competition yeah show. you don't there's lines for everything okay like if we were going to be on american idol we wouldn't be like talking about this either so so after she was asked to change the title and the lyrics to you and your heart she said you want me to rewrite my song for you for American fucking idol what does that even mean how do you have sex with your heart she performed who knew instead I was like wait wait they were expecting her to go up there and perform you in your hands by singing you in your heart and she literally goes up there and is just like you want me to you want me to rewrite the song I'll rewrite the song hit it and then she sings a song about losing someone to an overdose I was like oh that probably brought down the vibes. Yeah. What was song? How does that one go? I know better. Still, yeah, you said forever. Never. Who knew? She did it last night and it was amazing. She did. And you know what? She did it really quickly because that is a song that if I have two beers in my system and she does a little monologue before it about what the story's about and then she started to sing it, I would have been in tears the way that I was in tears at. Uh, Noah Cyrus. It would have been a mess. I would have been messy because that song upsets me. You're an emotional person. I am. I can't help but I'm in touch with my emotions. Ladies, is that something you're interested in? That was so weird. Um, Should we wrap this up? (laughs) I'm good. I feel like I've given a lot and I think we're getting annoying at this point. Yeah. I had fun though. Did you have fun today? I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Some episodes are more fun than others. We always have fun with you guys, but like this was an actual, I will think back of this one and say, wow, I really, really enjoyed this one. I put my pink pussy into it. Well, it's good. It's it, it, we want to keep doing this, and we're going to keep doing it. So it's it's fun to have episodes that feel um, fun. Cookie. Cookie, crazy. I'm gonna have a lolly, another lolly when I get downstairs. I'm gonna start editing this episode. <laughs> okay, campers. We'll see you next week. Um, like always, Patreon's available. Lots of new content there lately. We have trail mix. Oh, please rate us five stars if you haven't. Yeah. What's wrong with you? We're giving you everything we've ever wanted. For free. (laughs) 
<laughs> we're trying our best. Um, and also, please make sure it's five stars. Somebody accidentally gave us a really good rating yeah. and then three stars. And it's not their fault. They didn't mean to. I can tell that they did not mean yeah, to. Yeah, they were like, this is the best show ever. Three and stars. Our, I was like, our, what it the brought, hell? It did bring our ratings down. <laughs> it did. <laughs> they, they it's didn't fine. mean to. Oh, Whatever. I don't even care. You. I love you guys. We'll see you next week. And with that being said, lights, lights out, out campers. campers.